Thanks for joining us again on Two Old Guys Review. Great entertainment. Today, it's a Netflix limited series called A Man in Full, starring Jeff Daniels. Brand new and uh, getting a lot of a lot of good press. Yeah. So uh, I uh, watched this at your recommendation, John. I, quite frankly, had not been paid much attention to it. Uh, I mean, I had heard of it, and I think I saw Jeff Bridges... Uh, uh, interviewed once or twice about it, but I didn't pay much attention to it. You were really excited about it. And so I, I loved it. I watched the first I, two I watched episodes. The whole thing. And and yeah. if anything, you understated <laughs> the potential for it. <laughs> it's got so many great characters, so many twists and turns, so many little backstories that are all interconnected in one form or another. And uh, I just very exciting and uh, I watched the first two episodes. I can't wait to see the, the uh, next four. And it's only a six-part miniseries, so uh, I'm yeah. sure I'll, I'll, within the next week I'll be done with it. But uh, really exciting, really, and the acting is amazing. Yeah, I, I one of the things I liked about it in retrospect is when it was over, when the, the six parts were done, I looked back at it as a movie, hmm. a, a six-hour movie, mind you, but nevertheless <laughs> a, a movie. And I th I love the cohesiveness of the story. And I love the fact that it wasn't just a setup for season two. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to bet this is so successful. There will be a season two, but put that aside. So I just loved it, at, but it is so well done. Um, they didn't spare any expense. It's not a difficult uh, special effects movie or anything that would be expensive to make, but the acting is wonderful mm -hmm. and the story is terrific. By the way, speaking of stories, it was written it's from a book by Tom Wolfe. Mm. I don't think I've ever read a Tom Wolfe novel, although I should have. And I definitely didn't read A Man in Full. Did, did Are you familiar with Tom Wolfe? No, uh, you know that I'm a J.A. Jantz uh, groupie. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, those 73 books have held me for a while. Yeah, yeah. Anyway... Um, Tom Wolfe apparently has a, a, a noticeable style mm -hmm. and people who have seen this recognize his style and all the, the twists and turns yeah. and the characters and the themes, I guess, are very similar to Tom Wolfe novel. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, why don't we uh, tell the audience just a little about what the premise of the whole situation is? Oh, excellent idea. The synopsis, a quick synopsis yeah. is uh, Charlie Coker, uh, or Croker, pardon me, is played by Jeff Daniels. He's a mega billionaire real estate mogul in Atlanta. And he's very much like Trump. I mean, there are analogies to Trump that you just can't avoid. Timing is perfect. Yeah, by, um, by, 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 just a, a, in all fairness to anybody in our audience, I don't care whether you're left, right, center, or nothing. This was written before Trump w entered the scene on the political scene. So. You know, that's true. Whether it's based on him or not, this is like in the late 90s, I think it was written in the early 2000s. I, I think so, yeah. 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 And so they're just making a movie of it now or right. a limited series, if you will, for Netflix. So Charlie Croker is a multi mega billionaire real estate guy and he's facing bankruptcy because he's leveraged all his properties, big mega malls and things like that. Uh, he's leveraged them all into loans and the loans are, they, they add up to like, 800 billion, some ridiculous figure that even he can't refinance. And for some reason, the banks all of a sudden don't want to loan him more money. Now, that's the some reason is the interesting part. Who's against them? Why are they doing that? Why wouldn't they want to keep leveraging the, the with a successful guy? You'll find out as you watch the series. Um, it. Let me continue the, uh, the synopsis. He faces bankruptcy Political and business interests collide as he defends his empire from those attempting to capitalize on his fall from grace. So there's bad guys out to get him, uh, or maybe they're good guys out to get him because he's not a perfect figure by any means. Right. He's, if you will, a Trumpian figure. Um, and he's inspired a lot of hatred throughout his career. His, his, uh, the banker that he deals with most is like a junior vice president named Raymond Pipegrass or Pe Pe Peepgrass. Peepgrass. Peepgrass, played by Tom Pelfrey. And Tom Pelfrey, who's a good looking guy, 
plays the most wonderful, slimy, Wine. hair slick back, oily, low level, snake in the grass banker you could ever find. Anyway, he hates he hates um, Croker because Croker is a bully and makes fun of him. And he says, Hey, pee pee, how you doing? And has a nickname for everybody, but it's, but it's really bothered Raymond Peepgrass. So Tom Pelfrey is one of the quote bad guys. He wants revenge for nothing other than the humiliation he suffered having to work with, uh, Charlie Croker over the years. But his, his boss is also another guy who, for some reason, hates Croker, just maybe because he's rich, who knows. And that's played by Bill Camp. I had to look over the name. Bill Camp does a great job as a heavy set uh, bad guy to uh, uh, Tom Pelfrey's thin, slimy bad guy. Now, they both work for the bank. And of course, there's more at work than just two guys who hate uh, Charlie Croker. But I have to tell you, it reminded me, I don't know if you ever saw this series, Billions. Have you ever seen Billions? Um, it, it was, um, um, I have to think of the name of the actor, but it, this reminds me a lot of Billions, where it was set in New York and they were after, it was a legal story, and blah, blah, blah. But it, it has a lot of similarities to a lot of great stories. And I just thought the acting was wonderful. Yeah, not only that, but there was so you have the the ex wife, uh, Diane. Right. Lay. You have the uh, I forgot her name, but the one who plays the trophy wife, who is no bimbo. I mean, she is yes. really smart, and she uh, is Sarah a, Jones, a, yeah, a, a devious and and yeah. and it, all of the acting was. I think we ought to leave it here. We encourage you to watch it, but all of the acting was. Actually, first rate. The casting yep. casting director should get some kind of prize for this. Just yep. everybody was was perfect, down to the secretary of uh, Croker who has a backstory, and her yep. uh, husband. It, it's just a wonderful series of inter uh, connecting uh, events, uh, yeah. and it just su superbly well acted. I can't wait to watch the uh, the final four episodes. Which I'll, you're, you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. The, the twists, the it. twists and turns of the plot um, bring everything together, you know, you, and you see how everything fits together, and it becomes even more insidious at that point. So it is a fun show to watch. It's uh, did you say five or six episodes? Six, six episodes on Netflix. So we recommend it, and uh, maybe Art, you'll give us a review when you finish. Absolutely, it was really it's. it's worth every minute of it and I can't wait to see uh, probably this afternoon I'm going to be going on and taking a look at the next episode. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.